right now on To The Point. Another recall threat. Either reform the governor we have or replace him with somebody else. Governor Newsom served with recall papers. What happens next? The man accused in the Davis stabbings is back in court. The penalty prosecutors won't be seeking. Could how you spend time on social media change? The cases the justices are taking up right now. And later, a woman's life shattered. Tonight, she shares her warning to others to the danger right in front of their face. Thank you for joining us for To The Point. I'm Alex Bell. And first tonight, California's governor is facing another recall campaign. This one launched today by the very same people who unsuccessfully tried to recall Gavin Newsom back in 2021, if you remember. Becca Hobbegger got reaction and insight from a variety of voices, including the leader of this recall campaign and those who say the effort doesn't stand a chance. Republicans, independents, and Democrats alike will tell you California has its problems right now. Currently, there's a lot of dissatisfaction with the direction of the state. The last polls show that Newsom is underwater and his unfavorability rating is higher than his favorability. That's Democratic strategist Steve Maviglio and Republican Ann Hyde Dunsmore. Being one of the worst states on education and the highest homeless rate. Where they disagree is whether Newsom should lose his seat as governor over these problems, including a looming budget deficit of an estimated $73 billion. I think some of his enemies think this is a time to pounce. Uh, but recalling somebody and being dissatisfied with somebody are two completely different things. Hyde Dunsmore with Rescue California is leading the latest effort to recall Gavin Newsom, announced Monday morning. He isn't going to be governor of California one way or the other after three years. Uh, we want to shorten that timeline up because I don't think we can afford to have him do what he's doing now. And that is a devastating impact on the budget as we see it today. But this recall is getting mixed reactions from her own party. I don't see where this goes where we'll have victory in the end, to be honest. Republican strategist Tamika Hamilton says she sees the recall effort as a commitment of time and money that could be better spent. I think that we need to be focused on the races that um, can help bring more balance to California and, you know, putting resources into that. The recall campaign comes as Newsom is making national appearances. Here he is Sunday on NBC's Meet the Press campaigning for President Biden's reelection. Hyde Dunsmore says at the very least, she hopes the recall efforts force Newsom to focus more on California. Recalls serve a lot of purposes. Um, where Gavin Newsom is concerned, um, I think it makes him a better governor. <laughs> Um, that is, we do want him out of the job or we want him to do his job. In a post on X Monday morning, Governor Newsom said Trump Republicans are launching another wasteful recall campaign to distract us from the existential fight for democracy and reproductive freedom. We will defeat them. If this is an effort to boot uh, Governor Newsom out of office, it is a real long shot. Political analyst Steve Swat says the recall campaign can still hurt the governor even if he keeps his job. The motivation behind this, I think, is to distract uh, Governor Newsom, perhaps to embarrass him with the fact that, yes, there's another recall, uh, to uh, keep him close to home so that he's not helping out the Biden campaign as much as he would like. And I think those factors, uh, you know, together with the fact that it would cost, uh, you know, it, it, the governor would have to shell out tens of millions of dollars in any uh, recall campaign. I think those are probably the real motivations here. All right, and Becca Hobbiger with us now. Clearly, a lot of voices, a lot of sides to this, but I do want to be clear, this campaign is far from a statewide ballot, correct? That's right. It was just announced today. You know, if you remember from the 2021 recall, organizers have to gather hundreds of thousands of valid signatures, and they're not even at the point right now where they've filed the petition to start that process. The whole thing will require a lot of time, effort, and money, plus a replacement candidate, a candidate or candidates willing to step forward and sell themselves to voters as a viable alternative to Newsom. And Alex, all that would happen before, uh, it, all that would have to happen, that is, before it could be placed on the statewide ballot in November. So long story short, this is still very much just the beginning and we will continue to follow all of this for you. Becca, thank you so much. All right, in other news tonight, a pedestrian was hit and killed by a San Joaquin County Sheriff's deputy just outside Stockton Sunday, and it happened on eastbound Highway 88 across from Piccoli Road around 11 p.m. The pedestrian died on scene, and CHP is investigating this. 
The Davis stabbing suspect was back in court today for a preliminary hearing. This hearing will determine whether there is probable cause to believe that suspect Carlos Dominguez committed the stabbing and if this case will go to trial. So the district attorney's office says they will not seek the death penalty. While in court today, Dominguez appeared largely emotionless, mostly looking down or straight ahead as several officers and detectives were called to the stand. Now he faces murder charges related to the deaths of 50 year old David Bro near Central Park and then 20 year old UC Davis student Kareem Abu Najim near Sycamore Park. And today Corporal Fang Lee with the Davis Police Department testified. Um, he responded to the Sycamore Park incident and he says that a doctor who lived nearby heard calls for help and he says that the doctor had a brief interaction with the suspect at the scene and tried to go after him before he got away on a bike. Uh, prior to fleeing on the bicycle, the uh, suspect um, told uh, Dr. Massey uh, something to the effect of, um, uh, what's going on? Uh, why are you bothering me? Leave me alone. And then he took off on the bike. Dominguez faces charges including murder and attempted murder. He is expected to appear in court again tomorrow afternoon when the preliminary hearing is set to resume. Today also marks the start of a historical trial in Roseville where a man is facing murder charges related to fentanyl. So 20 year old Carson Shuey is facing charges in the death of Cade Webb back in December of 2021. Today, a jury was selected in the case. Now previously prosecutors with Placer County had to convince a judge that Shuey knowingly endangered Webb in order for a murder charge to be filed. And during that time, District Attorney Morgan Geyer shared evidence that two of Shuey's friends, including his girlfriend, overdosed before Webb. Shuey has pleaded not guilty and the trial is expected to start back up tomorrow morning around 8.30 with opening statements and witness testimony. SeaQuest, it's an interactive aquarium out in Folsom where customers can touch, pet, and feed not just fish, but a large number of wild animals. Now insiders are coming forward saying that SeaQuest is unsafe for animals and customers. Investigative reporter Andy Judson has been looking into SeaQuest and joins us tonight. Yeah, Alex, no daylight, small enclosures, and being forced to interact with people without proper breaks. Those are the conditions former employees say animals have to endure at Sequest. Here's a preview of our investigation. Can you imagine not going outside when you're a wild animal? It was like walking into a shopping center that they had emptied out the clothes and shoved a bunch of animals in. USDA regulations, each animal is supposed to have breaks. There was no real breaks. You're thinking thousands of dollars in a day. There's 1,500 different species of animals among five different continents. Everything is hands-on. We couldn't even see the animal that we were feeding. It was just filthy. The thing just completely came out of the water and got her hand. There's no excuse for animal abuse. I think it's awesome Folsom needed a place like this. I think Sequest is a recipe for disaster. And while Sequest is a national chain, our investigation focused on the only Sequest in California right here in Folsom. But no matter the location, former Sequest employees expressed great concern over the business prioritizing money over the animal care and health there. Alex. And Andy, it's only been a few days since we even announced the airing of this investigation and already you've had quite a number of people reach out to you. What have they been saying? Yeah, the response has really been immediate, which is pretty outstanding. We've had a number of people reach out to us, including customers who said they went there with their kids and they're concerned not only for the animals, but also for their kids there. So, of course, we'll continue to follow all those leads and keep reporting on this. All right, Andy, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. And don't forget, you can watch Andy's full and investigation into Sequest right here on To The Point tomorrow. That's Tuesday at 630. All right, still ahead on To The Point. The Supreme Court hearing a historic case that could change the way you use social media. Still tracking a few showers left over from our Monday storm system. A much bigger one, though, on the way. And later, danger right in front of your face. One woman shares how wearing sunglasses while driving 
changed her life forever. We shouldn't have to think about it when we put sunglasses on our face that we might have to lose our eyesight, that we might be partially blind or blind because of something that we're wearing on our face. All right, let's go ahead and get a look at our forecast. Mm -hmm. It was so beautiful this weekend. The sunshine nice. was so nice. Did you get outside? I Spring cleaning. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, right? same, Weeding same. <laughs> and spring cleaning. As we take a look at some of those conditions outside right now, we're basically looking at a few lingering showers. Those are going to be moving off to the east, so the sea are still dealing with a few showers as well as parts of the foothills. It's not really going to hang on too much longer here. Temperatures for today, a little bit cooler than the weekend. 60s down low, 50s for the foothills, and 40s for the Sierra. Tonight, still beautiful. Watch out for them mosquitoes so oh they have been really bad the past couple of days with that warm weather that's been hanging around tonight we'll see temperatures cooling into the 50s much colder system brewing in the gulf of alaska that's what's going to be hitting us later this week so we've got a couple of dry days in there and then our winter storm watch will start up on thursday that's going to take us all the way through sunday at 10 a.m. You can see this is a major impact storm, mainly for the Sierra. Extreme impacts coming in on Friday with very heavy snow. Sierra gusts up to about 60 plus miles per hour. And our snow level during the evening on Saturday and through early Sunday down to about 1,500 feet. Not much of a rain producer for us. We'll get rain. It's just not going to be the high impact storm that we will see in the Sierra. Again, this all gets going on Thursday, really ramping up overnight Thursday through Saturday, even in through Sunday morning, and then we'll start to see things clearing out. So really the big impacts are gonna be Thursday night, Friday through Saturday. Be prepared for that for the weekend forecast. In the meantime, pretty nice for tomorrow. 40s for the Sierra, 50s and 60s for the foothills. Along the coast, we're in the 50s and 60s. We'll take that inland as well. Pretty nice start to the day, actually. We start off right around 40. Highs will be in the 60s for the valley, 40s for the foothills, and uh, or 40s for the mountains, I should say, and the foothills in the 50s, and right around 59 for the coast. And by Thursday, though, big changes. We are right back to those winter-like conditions, as you can see, colder this weekend. All right, next on to the point, the justices taking up cases related to your use of social media. What's on the line? Plus, were you affected by last week's AT&T outage? You could be eligible for a credit. We'll explain after the break. Welcome back. Right now, the Supreme Court is hearing two cases regarding what you can see on social media. They're weighing how the First Amendment applies to social media companies as they consider a pair of cases that could transform how the Internet has operated for decades. The hearings are beginning with the justices considering Florida's law, which makes it illegal for tech companies to ban candidates on the ballot in the state from their social media sites. Florida Solicitor General Henry Whitaker argued social media companies are unfairly censoring conservative viewpoints on their sites and that the platform's portrayal as passive hosts undermine their arguments that the content moderation policies amount to protected speech. We agree, we certainly agree that a newspaper, a book and a bookstore is engaging in inherently expressive conduct. And our whole point is that these social media platforms are not like those. And but why doesn't are it depend on exactly what they're doing? Justice Sonia Sotomayor questioning if the law is overly broad, going on to name a wide range of companies that could be affected, like the digital marketplace Etsy. This is so, so broad. It's covering almost everything. Justice Amy Coney Barrett echoing her colleagues. We're talking about the classic social media platforms, but it looks to me like it could cover Uber. It looks to me like it could cover just Google search engines, Amazon Web Service, and all of those things would look very different. Paul Clement arguing on behalf of NetChoice, a group challenging the Florida law, drawing a clear distinction between a government and a private party engaging in content moderation. Is it anything more than a euphemism for censorship? If the government's doing it, then content moderation might be a euphemism for censorship. If a private party is doing it, content moderation is a euphemism for editorial discretion. And a ruling that would force tech companies to have no editorial discretion could affect their business models, which rely on curation to attract advertisers and users. A court decision is expected in June.
All right, in your voice, your vote, the 2024 presidential election. Over the weekend, former President Trump won the South Carolina Republican primary. Even after losing a top donor, Nikki Haley is vowing to stay in the race at least until Super Tuesday. And it comes as both candidates gear up for tomorrow's primary in the critical battleground of Michigan. Right now, polls show Nikki Haley trailing Trump by as much as 60 points. California's primary election is just one week away. More than a dozen vote centers are now open in Sacramento County. If you didn't know, they will be open every day through Election Day, which extended hours on Election Day. At each vote center, people can register to vote. You can vote early in person and drop off your ballot if you received one in the mail. And here at ABC 10, of course, we want you to feel prepared to make your voice and to make your vote and have your voice heard. So make sure you join us on Thursday at 630 for a special election edition of To The Point for more on how to vote and the key local races that you should be watching. Now to your price points tonight. Have you been spending less money at the grocery store? Well, you could be helping slow down inflation with prices on average nearly 20 percent above pre pandemic levels. The AP says the latest trends among consumers include shifting away from buying name brands or just buying less. And that may be pushing companies to slow down their own price increases. And AT&T is offering $5 to subscribers affected by last week's service outage. The credit will show up on your bill, though it will not apply to business accounts or people who use Cricket, which is the low cost wireless service. And the Federal Trade Commission is suing to block a proposed merger between grocery giants Kroger and Albertsons. The FTC says the $24.6 billion deal would eliminate competition and lead to higher prices for millions of Americans. And Kroger and Albertsons, two of the nation's largest grocers, agreed to merge back in October of 2022. The company said a merger would help them better compete with Walmart, Amazon, Costco and other big rivals. All right, next on to the point. It's a danger in front of your eyes. Every time you drive, one woman shares how a pair of sunglasses changed her life forever. In a split second, a woman's life shattered. What at first looked like a minor car accident stole part of her vision. So tonight, Caitlin Ross shares her warning to others to open their eyes of the danger right in front of them when they are on the road. Getting in the car is getting easier for Hannah Oliver. At first, it was very stressful. It was a lot of anxiety. Anxiety about what she's missing. You, right here, I can't see you. And what she's lost. I actually have no depth perception. Really? Don't get nervous. <laughs> her easy smile and her sunglasses covering the hard truth of her accident. It's in excruciating pain, like the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Wearing sunglasses when she got into a minor fender bender. As soon as the airbag hit my eye, it literally shattered into pieces. Airbags deploy at a speed of 200 miles an hour with a force of up to 2,000 pounds. That's an impact most sunglasses just can't withstand. Hannah lost her right eye just three months before her wedding, finding the courage to talk about it online. When a video goes viral, it's like, do, 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 do. My airbag came out, hit my precious designer sunglasses, and they shattered into a million pieces. She found out she wasn't alone. I've connected with hundreds of people that have lost their eye the same exact way. People have lost their eye through sunglasses, and it's because we're not making them safer. I've got a pair here. Safety here. is something optometrist Frank Winsky thinks about a lot. The eye doctor says anyone getting behind the wheel with glasses or sunglasses should have polycarbonate lenses in the frame. It's basically shatterproof where it'll take a significant impact and not break. The polycarbonate material is more expensive than glass or plastic, but tested rigorously for safety. What I could only find was like sporting sunglasses or like fishing sunglasses, but I am a girl's girl and that was not going to work for me. Hannah set out to create both, designing her own sunglass line. 100% protective is what I say but also stylish. With shatter resistant polycarbonate lenses. We shouldn't have to think about it when we put sunglasses on our face that we might have to lose our eyesight, that we might be partially blind or blind because of something that we're wearing on our face. Hannah thinks polycarbonate lenses should be mandated. It's standard for kids' glasses, but after turning 18, it's an upcharge to get the stronger material in a lens. If that would have been a law, like I would have my, 
I would have my vision right now. We, you would be in the car with a driver that has two eyes and not one. <laughs> Now she's driven to use what she does have for good. I feel like this happens for me for a reason, and I feel like I can be a voice and change things, and I hope through my story that I can change the eyewear industry. And so here's the deal, too. It can be tricky to spot polycarbonate lenses if you are buying a new pair of sunglasses, so you can find the materials on that little tiny tag that's attached to the sunglasses. And we just want to let you know they are going to be more expensive than what you'll find at a box store, so you can expect to pay about 100 bucks more than normal. All right, thank you so much for sharing your stories with us. We always love getting to meet you. So if you have something that you think we should be looking into, make sure you reach out to me and the team. Remember, strangers are just people that we haven't gotten to know yet. Take the time to get to know someone. Have a great night, and I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Hey, it's Alex. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching the To The Point team and I love hearing from you and I hope that you'll stay in touch. And don't forget, you can always email me and the team at to the point at abc10.com or you can even send us a text message at 916-321-3310.